Hey, 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 everyone. It's Blockchain Bernie here broadcasting live from fabulous Las Vegas. And this is the truth about Starlink. I set up Starlink here in my office in Las Vegas. And uh, it's basically a backup because I'm using Cox and, and Cox Internet here. They have gigabit and even two gigabit right now. But they have become unreliable. So in this video, I tell you everything about Starlink, what I ordered, exactly what I ordered, why I ordered it, how I installed it, because it's not that straightforward to install everything and point it in the right direction. And then I did all the tests and figure out if this is a great backup and can it even be used to run a validator, right? from your home or your office and just use Starlink as the internet connection. And um, there are some surprising results. It's not a clear yes or no, but it's quite surprising. So watch this little video all the way through the end. And I have one ask before I dive into all that. Please give me that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. All right, so looking into Starlink. So what I did is um, I placed my order here and it was for business, right? They have business and they have residential here. I went for that business. It's slightly more expensive, I feel, but it has like static IPs, which obviously you need to run a validator. Um, and it has a few more features. So <clears throat> I went with that. And uh, as you see here, this is a fixed site, right? So you, Starlink also supports mobile these days, right? So you can mount one of their dishes on top of your truck or car or anything of, of your SUV and drive around the desert, right? I'm in Las Vegas here, so likely I, I will do that. Um, but let's have a look back here. So I have this and um, then... The service, the standard service is 40 gigabytes priority. And then that sounds 40 gigabytes is, of course, not much uh, per month, right? But this is just the priority service. And after those 40 gigabytes are done, you can still use it, but not at, at the priority speeds anymore, which might be great for a lot of folks, right? So especially if you live in an area where there's not much usage, right? And here in Las Vegas, it seems there is not that much of a usage, believe it or not. So um, it's actually quite okay. So now let's go back here. And um, I opted for, because it's my backup here for you know, live streaming for all my business and stuff. So I opted for the one terabyte priority. One terabyte takes you a long, long, long way, right? The two terabytes, which will be for larger offices or stuff like that. So as long as you don't watch movies all day, the, the one terabyte is really, really fine. Um, so I opted for that one and, and that's 250 bucks. And, um, and then we have the hardware here, right? So they have several options and it starts at 349, right? So that's kind of enticing. Uh, you, you can start with just that dish for 349 and you have everything there, right? I, I think it even includes a Wi-Fi router if I'm not mistaken. So it's really low entry cost, right? And then, and then uh, if you opt for that 40, 40 gigs here that's 140 so it is competitive right and it's mainly made for you know rural areas where there's no other options um i recently stayed at an airbnb in in rural utah so they had that starlink there and i bet before starlink was there they had nothing there was just no internet there right and not even mobile reception right so it's a big, big game changer, actually. So, and I opted for that flat high performance here. And the reason I opted for that is it has the best performance. It has the widest angle of the sky. So it needs 140 degrees visibility, which was quite a challenge on my lot. So I'm going to dive into that also. 
140 degrees visibility and um but it has that way it can you know talk to a high number of satellites at the same time and that gives you the best performance it is the only piece of hardware that is um, recommended for mobile use so you can use it on your truck or suv or whatever and um and um, it has the best performance, especially in high temperatures, right? So everything is specced for up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like over 40, right? 40 something uh, in Celsius. But like half of the year here in Vegas, we're about these temperatures, right? We're even at 125 for a few weeks of the year. So... I thought like, you know, if I want to have this as a reliable backup to my Cox internet, because the Cox is not that reliable anymore, right? So um, I wanted to have that flat high performance. Um, I'm not using it mobile because it's on my roof right now. And I had to raise it, right? Because I need this 140 degrees visibility. But here in Vegas, everyone has a lot of palm trees, right? And I have like, I, I don't know, 25 or so palm trees on my lot, right? So I had to raise it a lot and I used the chimney on my roof and then extended it a few feet um, above that to um, actually have the visibility um, above these palm trees, right? Okay, I did all that and then, of course, I was curious what is the performance now, right? First of all, the setup was super, super smooth. It's really, really plug and play, right? You install that dish, you connect a few cables, it goes into the power supply, and I, I have that um, a Wi-Fi router from Starlink as well, and you just open the Starlink app, right? So it's super, super easy with that, and let's have a look at the Starlink app here. Uh, no, not this one. This one, right? So this is the app here on uh, on my iPad. And uh, you see everything's uh, super simple here. So uh, let's do a speed test here. Speed, And this is live now, right? It's as we speak here. I mean, I'm live streaming using my Cox. So... <laughs> Um, there's nothing else going over over Starlink right now. But as you see, I could be live streaming here over Starlink, right? It's 280 megabits download, and it's quite a nice upload speed. It's too small for me. I can't even read it, but you see it there. And um, like 10 or so, uh, usually it's at least 10. I'm not sure. Let me read it here. It's 25. So it's 25 right now. So that means I could live stream using Starlink, right? I could easily do that. And, uh, and that's awesome, right? So 280, 25, but it's not stable, right? It's depending on where the satellites are and they're flying there um, all the time. And they have a very nice obstruction tool here, right? So if I click on obstructions, I love this tool here, right? So satellites are flying on different trajectories. They call that planes um, all the time. And if you let it run for like 12 hours, 24 hours, everything will be blue here, right? So first of all, the blue was just one, one sort of line, uh, one plane where the satellite was flying. But then after a few hours, they fill it all with that blue color. And blue means we have reception, right? And red means there's an obstruction. So there's one pixel there with an obstruction. I'm not even sure it's that, if that's real. But that's nice. So I raised my, my, uh, my dish high enough um, that it goes over all of these um, palm trees here, which is just awesome, right? And um, as you can see, this whole, this whole um, kind of blue cap here that you see, it's tilted toward the north, right? So I was trying to figure out why is that tilted toward the north? And I thought like, oh, maybe because I tilted the antenna a little bit, it comes with an eight degree tilt, um, but it's a different direction here, right? So it's just that Starlink, and I researched that a little bit, 
Starlink is mostly connecting to satellites that fly a little bit north of here and not so much with the satellite that's fly, that flies south of here. And that's because, you know, I'm in Vegas, I'm likely to communicate with other endpoints in the internet that are north of myself, right? I rarely have traffic coming out of Mexico or uh, uh, Latin America uh, to me. Most of the traffic will be in the US and Canada. And so that's north of me. So, and, and Starlink knows that, and they connect me mostly to satellites that are north of my position here. So that's good to know. And, and if you have some obstructions there, figure out where you are, and, and you could take that into account, right? And position your, your, your dish in a way that it takes that into account. And I'm wondering, if you're in Canada or something, is it mostly connecting to, to satellites to the south? Um, if, you, if you know that, please leave me a comment uh, down there and, and let me know. I really, I really, really want to know. So, okay. So we have that. So now the question that we had in the beginning was like, can we really use Starlink to run a validator, to run a Solana validator, to run... Um, um, a Zandium DevNet validator or some other like a Cardano validator or something. Well, you saw the data there. We have 20, 20 milliseconds of ping times here. I tried the ping times from here to my server in Germany, right? It's like 170 milliseconds, whether I use Cox or whether I use Starlink. It's the same. It's Starlink is even slightly faster in most cases, right? So the, the latency is world class, right? There's nothing, nothing you lose by, you know, using Starlink as opposed to any other internet service. So that's awesome, right? And with the bandwidth, you know, the one terabyte will take you a long, long time, even for running validators. There's a two terabyte plan also there. But even if you go over the one terabyte, nothing bad will happen. You just won't have the priority access, um, which in most cases doesn't make that much of a difference. Okay, so, and then um, you have the speeds, right? So the, the it's like 280 megabits a download, and then it's, it's 25 upload. That would not be good for Solana validators, right? So if you run Solana, um, a Solana mainnet, even on Solana testnet, I wouldn't really do that, right? If you do it in Solana devnet, it's fine, right? If you do it on for a Cardano validator or anything like that, I guess it's perfectly fine, right? There's not that amount of traffic on there, the amount of transactions per second that are actually going through that. Um, that you know, if, if if you do it for for some other blockchains that don't have that high traffic, it's absolutely fine. Learn how to run a validator. You can do that. Um, and um, but for Solana validators, it's it's you know on the tough side. On Solana DevNet, it's gonna work. And on the Zandium DevNet, and by the way, the Zandium DevNet is up and running. Thanks again, everyone, for participating in that. And my next video will be just about that, the status of the of the Zandium DevNet. But you can absolutely run a Zandium DevNet node from your home and you can run it through Starlink, right? So you could run that anywhere in the desert or on Antarctica and just use Starlink and run a... DevNet validator from there. Yeah, so that's it. That's about the uh, the, the limitations and my experience uh, with Starlink and and my opinion whether you can run it on uh, whether you can run a validator there or not. Um, if you have any other questions or experience with Starlink, with running a validator on DevNet and all these type of things. Please leave me your comments uh, down below. But for today, um, guys, thanks so much for watching. Catch you later. Peace.